Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. How many enjoyed the rain this week? Good, good. And uh, the warmer temperature still in the middle of October. Good thing. We're glad you're here. We're going to worship and praise the Lord today. Just going to have a good time together. Um, by now, most of you know our good friend and member uh, Tim Ingram passed away this week. The funeral will be here Friday at 11. Uh, visitation with the family at 10, 10 ish. Uh, of course, uh, he's been cremated, so there will not be a body, but pictures and so on. And so, we are going to serve a luncheon afterward, and Missy is organizing it. So please, uh, when she approaches you, be kind <laughs> and say yes. So uh, we, we, we look forward to that time. And folks, uh, as far as we know, most of Tim's family are not believers. And uh, Tim was, we know he was, and uh, so we want to make it an honor celebration sure the gospel will be ministered uh, to the family for all of us. You wonder how we met Tim? He graduated with my wife from Hastings High School. A century. Uh, good, good. Uh, by 1986, you had five kids. You had six kids. I graduated in He was in Muskegon, those two connected, and a lot of things have transpired. Uh, we invited him to church. At that time, I was working because I wasn't at Forest Park. I was working with ATT, AT AT not AT&T, ATT. And, I -T -T. And, uh, what? I -T -T. No, it was ATT, and it was when I went into the, it doesn't matter. And, <laughs> anyway, I hired him, and through that, uh, had a chance to lead Tim to the Lord, and it was a wonderful time. So, we will celebrate. We will minister. Yes. On behalf of Tim, sitting behind Diane, I also thank you. And a lot of people don't know that he came over 40 minutes here in the Grand Rapids. He drove, drove here from Grand Rapids. He sure had a love for his grand. Also, should tell you that uh, Pat Pew is now home, and uh, I delivered to her last night some appliances. <laughs> okay, no, just never mind. Anyway, she's home. She had serious, serious blood clots after the fall and the, the uh, head injury that she's recovered from that surgery, and blood clots. And, scars from her knee down where they've gone in to take them out and reroute arteries. It's just, she can't hardly walk. So continue to pray for, for uh, Pat and Ray as he's a caregiver. Uh, look at the back of the bulletin for your prayer request and then, of course, pray for them throughout the week. Glad to have you here. You waving at me or you want to say something? Okay. Stepdad's been having back pain. Okay, let's his name is Brett. Okay. And what about yours? What do you want? Oh no. Okay. Pray for Jeannie. And she she fell. Okay. It's good to see you all again. Uh, let's walk across the aisle, greet one another, and Tim will come and lead us in worship.
All right, good morning again. A homeless man was walking down the street when he was accosted by a particularly dirty and shabby looking homeless man who asked him for a couple of dollars for dinner. The man took out his wallet, extracted ten dollars and asked, if I give you this money, will you buy some beer with it, in, with it instead of dinner? No, I had to stop drinking years ago, the homeless man replied. Will you use it to go fishing instead of buying food, the man asked. No, I don't waste time fishing, the homeless man said. I need to spend all my time trying to stay alive. Will you spend this on green fees at a golf course instead of food, the man asked. Are you nuts, replied the homeless man. I haven't played golf in 20 years. Well, said the man. I'm not, gonna, not going to give you the money. Instead, I'm going to take you home for a terrific dinner cooked by my wife. The homeless man was astonished. Won't your wife be furious with you for doing that? I know I'm dirty and I probably smell pretty disgusting. The man replied, that's okay. It's important for her to see what a man looks like after he gives up beer fishing and golf. <laughs> As always, when we lose somebody who was part of our family, I am going to remind you again, and I'm going to do this every time this happens, how special you are, and that every minute in this place, being a part of our family, whether this is your first time here, or you've been coming here for 30 years, we love you. And it's important that you know that. And I hope that when Tim finally took his last breath, that he knows that we are we're with him, that we love him, and that it's just I just want y'all to know that it's very important to remember every minute counts. Every time we come in this door, it, it matters to the people around you. You are all special, every one of you. Let's stand up and shout to the Lord right now.
else to pray for today. As you see this, it seems the list never gets shorter. Uh, we do have one I didn't mention. Andy would give us a brief uh, statement about your dad who's struggling. Um, his, my boy's home fine. All he got is whiplash out of him. Don't, don't ask about his car. This is a gay man. Um, my dad, they did surgery. They found the source of all his problems that they infected before. Um, while in the process, they found more cancer. But it was extracted out this time. It wasn't allowed free, but he had bone cancer, and it is taking him very slowly and very methodically taking him. So he is in good spirits. He's cheerful and laughing. But uh, that reminds us to pray. Uh, obviously, when we have something like that, decisions have to be made about extended care. And uh, so let's pray for, for Andy and that just he would uh, have wisdom in the choices and decisions they have to make. Yes, sir. Okay. She gets bruises. Your kids, what do you see? <laughs> Sandy. Well, my friend, I mean, my son's friend's wife has stage two cancer. Um, they are trying to like, move medicine on her. Um, her name is uh, Reba Pepper. Re Reba. Reba.
Everybody's got trouble, don't they? We are granted three score and ten, and if by reason of strength we make it beyond that, God has blessed us immensely, tremendously. And the world is full of trouble. Dominic? Your mom, Lisa. prayer. And I just caution you a little bit about our prayer chain. Uh, we want to share prayer requests. And it's important that we do only that. If you have a message to send to one of the person requesting, use the PM, not the prayer chain itself. All we want is a prayer request so that we can pray. And if you want to talk to the person in person, use the private message. Pardon? You're not on Facebook? Well, then use the email. Just do what you've been doing. We're right. Good. He has no idea. I have no idea. That's pretty normal. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we're so grateful and thankful for any number of things, but mostly we're thankful for your Son and the life that he gives to each of us. Father, I pray today for those requests that are not written on the back page of our bulletin, but those that have just been mentioned. Lord, we thank you that Andy's son was not injured severely in, in the accident. But we pray for his dad, for the cancer they found, the infection that has supposedly been understood and treated, surgically and antibiotically. Lord, this, uh, we just ask that you would be with Andy as they make choices and decisions that have to be made about the extended care for his death. Give him strength and wisdom. We thank you for answered prayer, for a heart valve that years ago, Father, because you've given us the ability and technology we can fix and you can heal. And we are so thankful for this answered prayer for Carol's friends, Father, for the bruises, and child, the bruises of childhood, and black and blue spots, always on legs, and elbows, and shins, and fingers. Just pray that you would heal those, and protect our children. Lord, we are concerned about COVID. Obviously, wherever it strikes, whomever it strikes. We ask for healing. We ask for eradication of this insidious flu. I pray that you would watch over, especially the Sutton family, to be with their kids, protect them. Even though they test negative now, I pray that you would just give them a perfect peace and a calmness and the ability to continue to function healthily. Lord, for Sandy's friend's friend, Reba, we would ask that you would give the doctors wisdom as they now look for treatments for the specific cancer, that she would respond well and would be healthy, restore her to health again. Lord, for, for Eric and Julie's friend, we ask your, your hand in their life, encouragement for this little guy. The leukemia would be conquered. Would leave him. He would be healed. Would grow up strong and healthy to be the man that you want him to be. Lord, there's so many that we could bring before you today. We especially ask for Tim's family that this would be an opportunity for perhaps they would see the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Lord, the rest of our prayer request, we thank you for, for Ray and Pat and the recovery you're giving, Pat. We pray that you would strengthen her and encourage her heart this morning. Then we pray for this group. We've all come in, Lord, with trouble. We face issues. We face issues in our own lives. 
some family, some professional, some personal, some emotional, some spiritual, some physical. And Lord, we just ask that you would touch our lives and our hearts with the word of God today. That our lives would be changed for your glory and our good. We pray that you would help us to be faithful and loyal to our Lord and Savior, no matter what we fall. Watch over us now as we give this day to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take an offering today. Would those who have been asked come forward and receive our regular Sunday morning offering? I think we got more than enough here. He's going to sing it all. Okay, come on. They're going to sign it. I always wonder, why do, we, why, why do we need a microphone for signers? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, let's pray together, shall we? Lord, thank you for the privilege of giving. Bless those who do. Especially those who have sacrificed for you. In Jesus' name.
you. Thank you very, very much. That's the next generation. And uh, that's exciting. Very good. Really, I'm going to read scripture for us. Kids and dogs are the worst act to follow. <laughs> from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 today. Let this be an encouragement. If you ever wish you were more educated, God says you have everything you need in this book. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. Thank you. Okay, boys and girls can head on downstairs. And let's stand as we sing, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Number 401 in the hymn book if you have one, otherwise the words are up.
It's entitled Three Men. But you see before you on the screen four people. And that's with purpose. I want us to start with 1 Corinthians in verse 11, where it tells us, For who among you knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God. In fact, he said over in the previous verse, in verse 9, he says, No eye has seen, nor eye has, ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Stop. You cannot know what God has for you. Wow. That seems serious stuff. We've talked about the will of God and that this is God's word and instruction for us. You can't understand it except the next phrase. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. It's the only way you can ever know anything about God, anything about life, anything about heaven. God has to reveal it. How many of you know what heaven looks like? Got a clue? What's it look like, Mike? It's like gold, silver, rose, so... Oh, gold. What? Fluffy? Fluffy. <laughs> that word. <laughs> fluffy. <laughs> Sounds like a pet. <laughs> yeah. We don't know, do we? Really? But yes, we do. And yes, it does have gold streets. And yes, it does have rivers. And yes, it does have orchards. And yes, it has, tree has trees that, that produce a different fruit every month. Every month for all eternity. Can you imagine that? Well, I'd like to think I can. I don't care for fruit. Two is enough for me. Give me an apple and a banana and I'm good. Maybe there will be a state tree. <laughs> good idea. I, I hadn't thought of that, but that's good. But I want to talk to you what this what this passage means, particularly about how we can know God. It says, "To us, for who among you knows the thoughts of man? Only I, only I know what's here. Only Marilyn knows what's in her heart." Only Andy knows what's in his. Why? Because I don't have the ability to read your mind. I can watch what you do, but I, I, I can't read your mind. I don't know why or what we are. But God reveals them. But we want what we want to see here down in verse 14. The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. Huh. I know this works. And that's the natural man. I hope it's brighter on your screen than it is on mine. Uh, is it? Okay. Uh, the natural man. Did you ever wonder why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus asked the question, what do you mean? That I can be born and go into my mother's womb again and come again? And it was a logical question because he couldn't perceive the Spirit of God. In order to know anything about God, to know anything about heaven, eternal life, sin, wickedness, righteousness, peace, joy, long-suffering, all of those things, you have to have the Spirit. You have to be born again. Pretty obvious. The natural man cannot conceive. But God will reveal it according to our verse 10. God will reveal it, reveal it to us by His Spirit. And Jesus answered Nicodemus and said, Yes, you must be born of the Spirit. No one ever got saved without the Spirit of God working in his 
heart and life, first to convict him of sin. Remember that. One of the biggest problems we have, I, I thank God for our children's ministry, is why does a child need to be born again? I mean, what have they done? I mean, they haven't lived a riotous life. They ha haven't, hopefully, they haven't imbibed in, in, in drunkenness or drugs or whatever. They, they haven't committed rape or murder. They might be a little mean to their brother and sister and want to. Where did that come from? comes from the natural man. And one of the biggest problems we have, if I ask them, if I go downstairs right now and say to the boys, how many want to go to heaven with a smile and raise my hand? They'd all raise their hand. Why? Well, they're excited about it. But why? That's good that they anticipate it and think it's going to be great. But do they realize that the reason they need to be born again is because they're sinners. They have a sin nature. Not one of us ever had to teach our child to say no. No. It's my toy. We didn't have to teach them that. Why? Because they're sinners. The same reason we cannot understand the things of God is because we are sinners until we are born again and he, we've re, we have received the Spirit of God. I know that many times people get a little concerned. I get concerned because in every group of people, I don't even care what side, there's somebody in that room that has not trusted Christ as his personal Savior because they have yet to understand you can't meet with God. You can't go to heaven unless you have the Spirit of God, born of the Spirit. Oh, we've gone to church. We might have even been baptized. I don't care which. You might be baptized as a baby. You get a wet baby. You, 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 you can be poured, dunked, sprinkled, hosed, Baptism won't save you. Only being born of the Spirit. The natural man is where we all are. And I'm constantly aware. I had the privilege of leading a 70-year-old man. He looked much older than me. <laughs> much older. And I led him to Christ because he never realized he had to be born again. That's a work of the Spirit. Well, then he goes on. There's another kind of man. And the godly man, and that's verse 14. We have not received this spirit, oh, that's verse 12. The, the man without the spirit does not accept the things of God, for they are foolishness, because they are spiritually discerned, or blinded. The spiritual man makes judgments, discernments about all things. Who has the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Now that's the godly man who has the mind of Christ. The Apostle Paul, who wrote 1 Corinthians, developed this further when he got into Philippians, the, the, the church at Philippi. When he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, when he was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, took upon himself the form of a servant, was found made in the fashion of a man. And one of the reasons that Jesus was resurrected from the grave was so that he could honestly say, I have been born again. Now that's very physical, very touchable. And which, by the way, when we are resurrected, if we have the mind of Christ, we will be resurrected physically. Changed in a moment from this wretched people we are into that which is glorious, the godly man who knows the mind of Christ. If I ask you today, how many of you know that you are in the center of God's will? 
I know what God wants me to do, I know how God wants me to live, and I live that way. Well, that's of course of a different color, isn't it? But you can know the will of God personally for you. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but the biggest one is that the spiritual makes judgments, discernments about all things, for he has the mind of Christ. I, I, I overuse it. I know I overuse it. My wife's going to tell me I overuse it. The WJD bracelet, which is the biggest farce forced upon man. Most people who wear it have no clue what would Jesus do. What would he do? What would he do with you? What would you do with his will? The godly man makes spiritual judgments. He makes right judgments choices. So when I prayed for Andy today that he would have wisdom in the choices and decisions he has to make, I'm trusting that he's talking with God and that God is directing his paths on the basis of all kinds of different information. What's best for my dad? What's best for my family? What for your son? All of those decisions because the spiritual man can make wise decisions. We all face and we all need But one of the reasons is, is the next man. We had the natural, we had the godly, and now we have the worldly. And for chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Brothers, I couldn't address you as spiritual. Now he's not calling him natural because he has been born again. Folks, I wish, the moment I was say, eight-year-old kid, I, remember, I don't remember much about being eight years old, but I do remember the day I accepted Christ as my Savior. And I wish, and now I pray, God, why didn't you just take me when I was born again and make me perfect? Never sin again. That didn't happen to you. Marilyn certainly knows that. And you all know it. And you know, I wish that it had been that way. But he said, I couldn't, he, I, I couldn't address you, Larry. I, I couldn't address you, Marilyn, as, as somebody who is, well, I, I can't make that decision. The Lord, I can't address you as godly because you're worldly. Well, what in the world does that mean? And so I began to think about it. Worldly, we think of a lifestyle, don't we? Uh, that's the word, the actual word that is used here is the word carnal, which means fleshly. Uh, and we've changed, or I've changed it to the word worldly, meaning that I am dominated by the physical needs, see, hear, taste, touch, and feel. And I'm dominated. If it feels good, looks good, smells good, tastes good, I want it. Yes, there probably will be a steak tree, because I think that would be good of God to do for us, Tim. I really do. Uh, uh, it's dominated by physical, world. And it's true that in the Bible, and for Christians, all things are possible. But not all things are profitable. And that's where our choices make. And I want to see, I want you to see where Christians, when immediately you think, well, he's talking about sin now, and to the best of my ability, I have stopped beating my wife. Don't do that anymore. She hits back. Uh, to the best of my ability, I have stopped. Uh, I don't do drugs, never did. Uh, I have stopped drinking uh, excessively. Uh, <laughs> those things. What I'm trying to say is, as soon as we start saying worldly, we have a mindset that tells us this is what we are. But I want you to see something, what we need from the prophet Isaiah. Just very, very quickly, I'm just going to, when I get there, I will read it to you. God says this, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him when he is near. And then he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, 
my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And he goes on, he says, so the word of my mouth that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire. To have the mind of Christ. Oops. We need to grow. We need to grow. We go from, in fact, he said in 1 Corinthians, in that, that passage, in brothers, I, have, I can't talk to you as godly, spiritual, but I have to talk to you uh, as worldly or carnal. And I don't think that he's talking about us in the context of, oh, well, your sins are forgiven, and they are, folks. Your sins are forgiven. Thank God that from eight years old to what I am now, that God has forgiven me. He forgave all of my... At eight years old, when I trusted him, my sin was forgiven the rest of my life. It's forgiven! Because one day I'll stand before him because my salvation is not based on what I did, but what he did. And he put me into his family. But that doesn't mean I'm not expected to grow. And one of the things that most of us have a problem with is when we read the Bible, we think it doesn't apply to us. Or we have, it's hard to understand. And so he comes back, I come back to the word from Isaiah, and he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. They're better than your thoughts. My thoughts are higher and smarter and more intelligent than yours. It would behoove us to walk in the word and live the word. And I want to talk about that for a minute because we can't grow. We, if, if, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you've gone beyond the natural man. That's not an issue. Immediately we come spiritual because now we have the Spirit of God and we can fellowship with God and we can learn from God and all of that. But we don't grow. We used to have Sunday evening services here, and, 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 and we did, and we had a wonderful time. It was fellowship time, but all, all, quite often, uh, Sunday evening, we'd ask, our, who's got a testimony for the Lord today? And we stopped doing it because invariably, someone would, would stand up, same person, persons, every week, oh, I thank God that Jesus saved me 55 years ago, and life has just been such a blessing ever since, and he's taken care of me, yada, 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 yada. What did Jesus do for you today? What instruction did he give you today? Are you following them? Are you doing what he has asked us to do? So, from the natural man, we become spiritual when we trust Jesus as a Savior. Why? Because He gave us His Spirit. We now can understand the things of God. And then, because we don't listen, we grow worldly, carnal, consumed and dead and destroyed by the flesh. Looks good, smells, must be good. Must be good. Not all, everything in the flesh. In fact, he warned us. Love not the world, world, or the things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, are not of the Spirit of God. And yet we take most of our directions on how will it make me feel, and how can I better myself. Or, well, those things are not wrong. I, I want to feel better. We pray for good health. But we pray that it would be done in accordance with God's Word. There are so many illustrations we could use from the Bible, and, and, and no, I'm not going to talk about the tithe or anything like that, but what did God tell you to do today? How do we raise our kids? How do we deal with our grandchildren? What do we do about these, these decisions that we're, we are forced to make in the world we live today? Most of you probably have been vaccinated. Good for you. I, I, I don't care. Did you do it because you followed the teaching of the Word of God and the Lord? Or just, well, i got to do it so I can keep my job? Hard decisions. They're not easy decisions. We need the discernment from the Holy Spirit of God, and we have to go to God's Word for instruction. Now, <coughs> I'm so glad my father followed this. Nowhere in Scripture does it ever tell a Christian, particularly a teenager, thou shalt not go to a dance. 
My dad wouldn't let me go to a dance. I snuck. So I'm, I, I, uh, <laughs> I disobeyed my father. But it wasn't the specific that is, that is the issue. My father knew it wasn't the dance. Good night. That's in, we were in the days of the twist, you know. <laughs> and, and those things. And, and there, unless you really were weird, it involved no physical contact at all, a lot of physical ec exercise. What didn't my dad want? There's a principle of wholeness and godliness that he was trying to teach me from God's Word. The principles of God's Word. There are a lot of things that, that are not specifically dealt with in Scripture, but they are by principle. And that's where it takes spiritual discernment. And you can't have spiritual discernment unless you're growing and in the Word. I gave you milk. I, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't have anything else. Well, what's the milk of the world? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just like in a swimming pool, most lifeguards don't jump into the pool to save you unless you realize you're going to drown. You don't call for help unless you think you're going to drown. And those, that's the milk of the word, the basis of where we start. So we can go on and eat the steak. Enjoy the fruit that he has for us. So there are really three kinds of people, but one added. There's the natural man. He doesn't know anything about God. He can't understand why do those foolish Christians think that Jesus is the only way. Well, we think that because it is in God's word. Jesus said, I'm the only way. No man can get to the Father, heaven, without me. Well, we've gone past that. And at that moment, I, I, I hope that at some point in your spiritual life, you've come to that euphoria, that spiritual high. The only thing I can, I can, can uh, equate it to is, 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 is relational. December 5th, Friday night in Grand Rapids on a street down, down low, on Monroe Avenue, Fox's Jewelers, Marilyn and I walked by and I said, my chicken way of proposing, could I buy you one of those? And, 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 and she said, I'll have to pray about it. <laughs> Her prayer life was wonderful. Because the next morning at 7 o'clock at breakfast, she said, well, I prayed about it. And yes. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, she went down to Hastings and, uh, and picked out a ring. Monday afternoon, I went down and bought the dumb thing. Oh. Oh. Hold it. She still wears it today. <laughs> But I'm telling you the euphoria when she said yes. Now, we were in Bible school college, and, and I couldn't jump up and hug her unless they would think we were dating. Oh, and, and, but I can remember the excitement. Yeah, this is going to be good. I hope you had that euphoria at some point in your spiritual life. When the Lord... Remember the ad years and years ago, Ford had a commercial, and they turned on a light, and it was it, it came on and said, Ford has a better idea, and the light turned on. Have you had one of those when you're reading the Bible or you're confronting a, confronting a, a question and answer you need, and all of a sudden the Lord's clear as a bell. I got it. A euphoric moment in spiritual growth. You need one of those, and you can't get it. If you're not reading the word, you can't. So that brings you to the growing, the, 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 the natural man, the world, the, the spiritual man, the worldly man. But what our intent is today is to say, look, you're going to be one of those three, but we want you to be the fourth, the growing. The man who is growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord every single day. And you can't get it by coming to church one hour. In fact, it's been one hour right now. We started exactly at 10.30 and it's 11.30. You can't get it, folks. Here. This is a part of it.
but you got to be in the Word yourself. You have to read it and love it. Well, where do I read? What do you want to read about? Love, 1 Corinthians 13. Faith, Hebrews 11. You're wondering about creation? Genesis. History? Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. Poems? Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, a love story, Song of Solomon. What do you want to read? What do you want to know about? It's in the book. Read it. Love it. And experience the blessing of God. The Apostle Paul went on and he said, I'm going to teach. Now his theme was dissension and all of the other stuff that goes with having a church. Thank God for our family. God has blessed us beyond measure. I ask today that you would join with me and covenant to grow each step of the way. Let's stand as we sing in close. Each step of the way.